Hello, my name is Rachel Douglas. I'm a regional anesthesia fellow at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I wanted to share with you today my presentation on gastric ultrasound. We are going to approach the information today with the IM framework. This is how this material was first presented by Dr. Anahi Perlis. She is best likened as the godmother of gastric ultrasound. My presentation today is based upon her research and material found on her website, gastricultrasound.org. First, we are going to start off with the indication of gastric ultrasound, and then we will move on to how to acquire the image, then how to interpret the image, and finally, how to apply our assessment to best medically manage our patients. So what are the indications for gastric ultrasound? It is really to assess the patient when there is an unclear prandial state. Most commonly, that may be when there is a trauma patient. There may be a language barrier or, or altered mental status of a patient. Also, we all have had a child coming in for surgery and there is a question as to whether or not they are truly in PO. Also, you may have a patient who has morbidity, so let's slow down gastric emptying, or you may want to verify NG tube placement. One of the biggest pushes to learn gastric ultrasound at my institution is the recent prevalence of patients taking GLP-1 agonists such as Ozempic. These medications are known to slow down gastric emptying in this class of patients. We are finding that patients on GLP-1 agonists may not truly be an empty stomach when presenting for elective surgery despite following the NPO guidelines. So what materials do we need? Just an ultrasound and the appropriate probe. We use a curvilinear or phased array probe for adults, or if you have a child underneath 40 kilograms, you can use a linear probe. To acquire the image, you find the xiphoid process with one hand and place the probe just distal to that. The probe should be oriented in the sagittal plane with the orientation marker pointed cephalad. For gastric ultrasound, we assess the gastric volume and contents in both supine and the right lateral to cubitus positions. This is the image that you should see. What we can appreciate in this image is the liver cephalad the antrum just distal to the liver. It has the A over it. And just deep to the antrum is the pancreas. Deep to the pancreas is the superior mesenteric artery, and deep to that is the aorta. For gastric ultrasound, all of the assessments are to be performed at the antrum of the stomach. We know we are at the antrum when you see the stomach, the pan pancreas, the SMA, and the aorta all in the same image. You may have to slide your, slide your probe perisagittally to get the alignment of these structures in the same frame. It is imperative that you prevent having an oblique cut of the antrum by keeping your probe perpendicular to the surface of the skin. Now that we have verified we are at the antrum, we can assess the appearance of the gastric antrum. Gastric ultrasound is first based off of qualitative assessment, so we're going to work on developing pattern recognition. Here we have an empty antrum. It is small, collapsed, and has the appearance of a bullseye. The bullseye pattern is from the five alternating layers of the gastric wall. Here we have a full stomach. We know that this patient recently ate because the solid material and air intake while the patient was eating is preventing the ultrasound beam from penetrating deeper into the abdomen. So we have the frosted glass pattern as appreciated by the white line that fades into the black dropout on the ultrasound screen screen. The antrum also appears distended with thin walls. Here we have a patient that ate a few hours ago. The stomach looks larger as compared to the empty antrum we saw earlier and there is not the black inner marking appreciated on the bullseye pattern from an empty antrum. Instead we see a fuller more distended antrum that has a heterogeneous mix of contents. The hyperechoic speculs are most likely small residual air bubbles or fat. Of note, as the food has digested, much of the air has escaped that obscures our view immediately after ingestion. Therefore, on the later stage of food intake, the ultrasound beam is better conducted and we see the deeper abdominal contents. Here we can verify that we are at the antrum because we see the pancreas, SMA, and the aorta. Here we see an antrum with only clear liquid. How do we know that? Well, we appreciate that with what we call the starry, starry night pattern, named after Vincent van Gogh's painting. The antrum is distended with clear liquid, which appears dark or hypoechoic on ultrasound. The speculated white hyperechoic dots are air bubbles. That air came from either when the patient was swallowing while drinking 
or they drank an effervescent liquid such as bubbly water. And here we see the homogeneous, dark, hypoechoic appearance of clear liquid without any air. It's natural for your stomach to create clear gastric fluid. As a physician, we need to discern, is this clear liquid just naturally produced gastric fluid, or is this someone who recently drank a significant amount of clear liquids? This is where we get into the clinical application of our assessments. To make the clinical application easy, we're going to break things into qualitative and quantitative assessments. I am going to start with a quick and easy qualitative assessment. Of note, this flow chart on the right is for when the patient is in right lateral decubitus position. Okay, so if the patient is starting out supine and you see a stomach full of solids or clear liquids, you are done. The patient should be considered a high aspiration risk. However, if you look and see the bullseye pattern suggestive of an empty antrum when supine, then you need to turn the patient into the right lateral decubitus position. If you see the bullseye in right lateral decubitus and supine, then you can be assured the patient has an empty antrum. We qualify this as a grade zero or low aspiration risk. However, if you only see clear liquids when the patient is in right lateral decubitus position and you did not see those clear liquids when the patient was supine, the liquid contents are considered to be less than 1.5 mLs per kilo, which is consistent with naturally occurring gastric juices. They would be considered a grade one or low risk patient. For quick clinical assessment, the aforementioned qualitative assessment method should work. However, if you're doing research or are second guessing yourself, you can do a quantitative assessment. So Dr. Perlis and her team came up with this chart for assessing gastric volume based on the calculated gastric antrum area and the patient age. The measurement is only reliable if the patient is in the right lateral decubitus position. You would calculate the gastric area using the trace tool on the ultrasound machine and then refer to this chart to discern the patient's gastric volume. You would find that respective area in the first column here on the left and then follow the row over to the patient's respective age. Any green colored box suggests that the patient would be a low aspiration risk. So how do we calculate the gastric area on the ultrasound machine? Here at the Mayo Clinic, we have both the export and the LX ultrasound machines. So I'm going to take you through that. So first, on the export, you want to freeze the image by clicking the freeze button at the bottom of the screen. Then you want to touch the more controls button at the bottom right of the screen. And then the trace option will appear. Click that. Then you will see the, the trace tool. So you drag the trace tool around the gastric antrum, making sure that you include the hypoechoic ring around the stomach as this is the gastric wall. And then finally, an area will appear, and you use that to discern the volume using Dr. Perlis's chart. To find the gastric antrum area on the Sonocyte LX, you first hit the snowflake icon to freeze the picture. Then you hit the caliper button. You will then get this screen, and you want to click the trace button. And then as before on the export, you use the trace tool to outline the gastric antrum. And then you will get a calculated area and you refer to Dr. Perlis's chart. So here are some quick clinical pearls. If you're looking for the gastric antrum and feel a little lost, the antrum is always immediately distal to the liver. If you look in the supine position and the antrum appears full of heterogeneous solids or clear liquids, then you're done. The patient is considered a grade two or high aspiration risk. However, if the antrum appears empty supine, you still have to evaluate the patient in the right lateral decubitus position. There's a clinical reason that you can't turn the patient into right lateral decubitus, then you can lift the head of the bed 45 degrees, and that should give us a generally similar assessment. If you calculate the area and it is less than 10 centimeters, you should in general be okay. It doesn't matter what the calculated volume is, if you see the heterogeneous findings suggestive of a full stomach, your patient should be considered a grade 2 or high aspiration risk. 
And now for the severely obese patients. The depth is usually seven centimeters instead of three centimeters. The area of the gastric antrum may be bigger, but it is still 1.5 mLs per kilo of ideal body weight. You can still use the qualitative and quantitative assessment models for the severely obese. And now for other special patient populations, pregnant patients and kids. You can apply the same assessment methodology to pregnant patients and children. Sometimes with kids, it may be easier for the kids to sit in a parent's lap and you can record a video while you or the parent scans. Then you can go back and freeze the video when you see the proper alignment of structures and do your assessment. All right, so now it is time to test your knowledge. All right, what do you think about this image? The supine image is on the left and the right lateral decubitus position is on the right. Let's assess. We see the dark hyperechoic ring around the antrum. That is the gastric wall. It looks like the classic bullseye of an empty antrum. What do you think of these images? Again, the supine image is on the left. Here we see some of the speculations suggestive of air in a dark hypoechoic background. We should know that here that this would be a full stomach. If we see any evidence of clears or solids when supine, we're done. This is a high aspiration risk. I drank 250 mLs of water here. On the right, we see the image in the right lateral decubitus position. It is the more classic starry, starry night image of clear liquids. So what do we see here? On the left, we have the supine image. We can see the dark ring of the gastric wall around the antrum. Again, we would include the dark gastric wall when assessing the area in the right lateral decubitus position. When we turn to right lateral decubitus, we see that there is hyperechoic white speculations floating anteriorly. This is the fat of the yogurt that I ate floating on top of water. Irregardless of what the calculated area is, this is a full stomach because our qualitative assessment of the hyperechoic solid fat. So what do we think of this image? The dropout from the air and solids, that's a giveaway. This is a recently full stomach. We can appreciate this in both supine and right lateral decubitus positions. And here, let's look. Can you find the stomach just distal and tucked under the liver tip in the supine position? See the hypoechoic ring of the gastric wall? What do you think of the contents? To me, it's hard to tell, so let's look in the right lateral decubitus. Here you see a solid bolus of a distended antrum full of heterogeneous gastric contents. This is suggestive of a late full stomach. Someone just ate a meal a few hours ago. All right, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter if you have any questions or comments, and happy scanning. Bye.